for circulation. Mr. Handy, I would like to begin to get into the whole aspect of audio and visual education and selling, if I may say so. And two of your very earlier associations, and I'd like to know the message you used in those days, I believe were with the National Cash Register Company, as well as International Harvester. Isn't that right? Uh, yes. The International Harvester Association came about on the fact that uh, people wouldn't come to see their merchandise. We had, by that time, were extending our uh, sales promotion methods on uh, the Chicago Tribune to uh, information on uh, for national ad uh, advertisers, retailers. The <coughs> equipment which the International Harvester Company made couldn't be put into the counters, shall we say. Surely. Or exhibit. You had to take the uh, prospective buyer, uh, in, or rather, I should say, you couldn't take the prospective buyer to it, generally speaking, and show it what it was good for. You had to take it to the buyer. Well, was this then when you devised the uh, rather large slides that you first began to use? No. Our first method was demonstration. I see. To... Uh, train the salesman to take them out to the farmer and show the farmer what they do for him. It was an extension of the principle we've used at retail, and it worked effectively. As for uh, John Patterson, uh, he was making a, uh, a new appliance, an office appliance, a cash register, uh, particularly a, st a store utility that also called for demonstration, and he was far ahead of anything that I knew anything about because I thought in terms only of informing and enthusing. And he uh, <laughs> thought in terms of demonstrating. In fact, the Carpenter Company people thought I was smart because of what I learned from him, and he thought <laughs> I was smart because of what I was learning from the Harvester people. <laughs> <Turned it out. laughs> right from that standpoint. But he uh, believed in uh, visual communication in an elementary way. He used uh, matches to represent people. He uh, Put the, lay them down on the counter in order, order to hold the attention of the person whom he was talking to. And from that he got into making uh, glass slides of these matchmen and their relationships as suggested by the little match figures that he'd laid out on the horizontal plane. Started making slides and uh, with the inspiration of the uh, so-called uh, Chinese uh, picture language of some 3,900 characters they were supposed to have at that time, he started making a library of slides of all the various relationships in which people could get in selling situations for particularly, but also human relations of every kind. And, uh, of course, uh, that uh, was tender to my plane. He had uh, 25,000 slides, a library, with which he would illustrate talks that he would make. I think, Mr. Handy, you once said that uh, what goes in one eye doesn't go out the other. Well, in general, uh, I think that's a true statement, yes. Of course, it's uh, put, put the emphasis on the fact that we can't so well depend on the ear, or depend on the ear alone. I believe in ears. I wear them. And I, well, I notice that other people do and make use of them. I guess they hold my glasses out very well, too. <laughs> Well, Mr. Handy, uh, the Jam Handy organization, a lot of us think of in terms of motion pictures. But actually, again, to get to the wider aspect of visual education, why don't you tell us a little bit more about the functions of your organization other than just motion pictures? Well, I believe in motion pictures, but the motion pictures, I believe, are the motion pictures in people's minds. And the motion picture as we term it, that is the cinema, is merely a means of putting motion pictures in people's minds. Now, there are many more economical and faster ways of inducing pictures in people's minds than by means of motion pictures. Motion pictures may be bit more vivid. They may, may be more specific. They may be uh, more stimulated from an emotional standpoint. They may be more uh, realistic. But... Uh, if you're dealing with familiar situations, 
and you can talk in terms of the previous experience of the people to whom you were talking and can make that sufficiently vivid by well still pictures or even by uh, words without pictures it's far more uh, ec economical of course so that only about a third of our work is in motion picture field uh, the rest is uh, verbal in terms of talks illustrated talks yes and dramatic productions of one kind or another we uh, produce live shows and in fact uh, we are the, the at times the largest employers of uh, theatrical uh, help should we say yeah. uh, in the country because we at times we have as many as 14 road shows out at one time I wonder if anybody asked you to do something for me Mr. Handy you on your garment have no outer pocket and I'm familiar with why you have your suit tailored without it, but I think it's an interesting story, and I'd like you to share it with our audience. I don't think I'm peculiar in this, but... Well, let's put it in this way. Temptation is hard to resist. At least I find it so. And when I had a pocket there, I was inclined to put things in it. It's the easiest pocket to reach with my right hand and with that. So I had a way of putting things there. And they interfered with uh, what I'm most interested in, which is uh, uh, maintaining attention and keeping interest on the thing that you're talking about. In other words, the concentration on communication, whereas I might right. be watching your pencils instead of listening carefully and watching right. you. And I had particular weakness. Because I used to, uh, on a blackboard or in a, on a chart, as we call it, these turnover charts, I would uh, use uh, green and red uh, and uh, black and sometimes a, a fourth color uh, to emphasize or give special significance to particular points that I was making. Sometimes those are symbolic, such as green for something good to do and red for, for take it, go slow, Danger and that sort of thing. Well, the convenient place to have those pencils so they didn't uh, slow me down in the flow of my uh, uh, conversation or my presentation or communication was in this pocket. Mm -hmm. And they would take attention when I didn't want the, them to take attention. And so I, uh, to remove temptation, I had all my, I had my suits there after me without that pocket. <laughs> I suppose for similar reasons, I have come to learn of certain wardrobe uh, do's and don'ts that your freelance actors and performers and so forth are asked to cooperate with in handy productions. Such as, I believe, one, one time the button-down collar was taboo. I think you discouraged the use of the bow tie when it perhaps was not widely worn. And at one time, I think you would have preferred an actor without a mustache rather than with one. Am I right, sir? Yes, and that is all based on the same idea. It's difficult to uh, keep your own at attention on what you're talking about and stick to the subject, let alone the, to have your hearers stick to it and anything that is conspicuous. Now, there may come a time again when, uh, well, when uh, smooth faces are, uh, or upper lips are conspicuous. But uh, at that particular time, uh, mustaches were conspicuous and they were uh, distracting. So far as the wardrobe is concerned, we do recommend to uh, speakers, executives, if they have a communication job, we suggest that they have a tie that be not conspicuous. Sometimes it's conspicuous, to, well, to have a tie the same color as your suit. In fact, I think uh, we're pretty close to that time now. Yes. But I had a fancy at that time, personally, for... Uh, uh, silk ties, and I had quite a collection variety of them. I had the experience of talking to an exe to an ex sales executive and presenting to him what I thought was a very good recommendation, uh, suggestion for the solution of the problem. And when I got through, he said to me, said, Jam, I was on a first name acquaintance with him. Well, I think I may say it was... Uh, uh, no less than Tom Watson, Sr. of the IBM. Oh. He said, Jim, would you mind starting all over again? 
I have been so interested in that beautiful tie that you're wearing that I haven't heard a word you've said. Well, uh, I decided that I would leave my colorful home <laughs> ties at home. That was the end of and your I, Yes, collection. I had a sofa cushion made out of Mr. Handy, I'm very much interested in something, too, that you were obviously a pioneer in, and that was the uh, documentary film. And I know of your uh, attraction to the kind of man that Tom Edison was. 